Hi everyone. I am going to do a uh, present. Okay, we are now on the first page of the tutorial. The first problems are you have to identify for a uppercase A, uppercase A, uppercase C, lowercase C, if they're homozygous or heterozygous. Homozygous means they have the same letters and thus they have the same trait because we're looking at genes. Heterozygous, we are looking at something that has uh, a dominant and a recessive trait. Usually the dominant trait is what you see. Okay, uppercase A, uppercase A is going to be homozygous. Uppercase E, lowercase e is heterozygous because it has upper and lower. So it has two genes for the same trait that's called an allele. And when you see this, that means that one is going to express itself. Okay, uppercase I, lowercase i, heterozygous. Uppercase B, lowercase b, heterozygous. Lower, lower, F. That's homozygous, and it's showing the recessive trait. Remember, dominant trait is uppercase letter. Recessive trait is a lowercase letter. The last one here is uppercase J, lowercase J, and that is he heterozygous. Okay. Now on to the next problem. For each of the genotypes, which is the letters, that is telling us the genes below, determine what phenotypes, that's what we see, would be possible. Purple flowers are dominant to white flowers. And below it, we have uppercase P, uppercase P. That is homozygous and it's dominant. So purple is the trait expressed. Uppercase, lowercase. Again, the dominant case is going to be expressed and you'll see purple. Lower, lower. That is the only time you see the recessive trait. The recessive trait is hidden by the uppercase letter, which is dominant. These are genes, and these are genotypes. These are phenotypes. Pheno, pH, equals photo, or what you see. Okay, brown eyes are dominant to blue eyes. So, uppercase B, is coding for brown. This person has two uppercase B's. They're going to be homozygous dominant. They're going to express brown. Uppercase B, lowercase b, heterozygous, but it's still going to express brown because brown is the dominant trait. Lowercase, lowercase, that's the genotype and the phenotype is going to be blue. Blue eyes. And that's the only time you're going to see it because it's a recessive trait. Now, we are on to the next slide. And I know I'm skipping through problems that I've given you. I am only doing a few to get you along so that you can try to do it yourself. Okay, problem three. For each phenotype, remember that's what you see, list the possible genotypes. That's the letters. Remember to use the letter of the dominant trait if they're expressing the dominant trait. Straight hair is dominant to curly. 
So I'm going to use the uppercase letter for straight. So there are two possible straights. Uppercase, uppercase. That's homozygous. The, so it this person got two genes or alleles for straight hair. The next one is heterozygous. What they this problem wants is you to express or explain all the possible traits that could be. This is not a person. This is just learning the terminology. This person is heterozygous, still expresses the straight hair, which is the phenotype. Ah, curly. The only time we see that is with two lowercase s's. It's a recessive genotype. It is homozygous because it's got two of the same letters. Okay. Pointed heads are dominant to round heads. So I'm going to use uppercase P for pointed, lowercase p for round. Here again, we have three potential phenotypes, which are determined by the genotypes. And that's what you're figuring out right here. So here we can have homozygous dominant. Uppercase P, uppercase P, homozygous. We can have heterozygous, uppercase P, lowercase P. In other words, this person, the genotype is uppercase, lowercase, but they express the allele for pointed because they have one copy of the dominant gene. And then round, that is recessive. The only way you see recessive is two lowercase p's. It is homozygous. The phenotype is round. The genotype is the letters. Okay, set up the Punnett squares for each of the crosses listed below. Round seeds are dominant to wrinkled. So here's the cross, and that is telling you how to write the Punnett square. So we do our setup of the Punnett square, and I'm going to put the uppercase R, lowercase R on the top, and then you could separate it, and then the other one will go here. So we have round seeds are dominant. That's the uppercase letter. Wrinkled is going to be lowercase letter. This Punnett square is now put into correct alignment. The letters up here are going to come down. So uppercase R, uppercase R lowercase r, lowercase r. So I just moved the letters down. I'm doing the Punnett square. And this Punnett square is going to determine the percentage of the offspring that will be round. Okay, now we're going to do the one over here. It was homozygous recessive. So we now move these in the right-sided direction. Lowercase r, lowercase r, and now from the bottom row, lowercase r, lowercase r. So what do we have? We have 50% or half are going to express the dominant trait. So they're going to be round. And 50% are going to be expressing the wrinkled trait. So the genotype is the RR. 
The phenotype is the round and the wrinkled. The question here was what percentage of the offspring will be round? Well, we can express it as 50%. That's one way of saying it. Or you could say one to one or two to two. Either way, it is saying, and when you do the two, you're counting. So this is one, two, and then you have one, two, two to two. And that's acceptable too, if you don't understand percentages. We're on the last screen. Let me move it down a little bit. Okay, now we're going to start doing some crosses. And I'm going to go over with you how to start them. These are very simple, but they are examples of what you could have, will have, on the test. Okay, a tall, homozygous, dominant, tall, with uppercase, uppercase T, plant is crossed with a short, homozygous recessive. What percentage of the offspring will be tall? So let's set up the cross. Uppercase, uppercase, times, lowercase, lowercase. That is the cross. I have just put together the problem after reading what I was given. Sort of like a math problem. So now I'm going to do the cross, and I'm setting it up here. Now again, I'm going to do down for the uppercase letters. T, T, uppercase T, uppercase T. So I brought that down. Yeah, I'll draw that across so you don't get upset. Okay, now I'm going to do a cross for the lowercase letters along the left. So we have determined that the question was, what percentage of the offspring will be tall? Well, 100%, all of them. They're heterozygous, the genotypes are that. The phenotype is tall. And 100% is the answer. Will be tall. Okay, now we're going to uh, uppercase, lowercase, which is heterozygous plant, but it's tall, is crossed with a another uppercase T, lowercase T. So the genotype or the cross that I'm going to set up is that. Always start your problems by figuring out what the parents are. Once you have that, all you have to do is set up the Punnett square. And then you can determine the answer to the problem. So here we have uppercase tall. I'm doing it in blue. I am sorry, I'll switch my colors when I do the cross. Okay, so there's the Punnett square setup. Now I'm gonna do red down. So uppercase, uppercase, lowercase, lowercase. And it doesn't have to be left and right. I, I just put it there because it's what you're getting used to seeing. But it doesn't matter which letter comes first because anybody who looks will know that the uppercase letter, um, if it's there, is going to be expressing its trait. Okay, now I'm going to do in black going across this way. So I have my uppercase T. Remember, I'm taking from here my uppercase T, my lowercase T, my lowercase T. 
Well, we've got three possibilities. You can have homozygous tall. You can have heterozygous, which takes up two of the squares. Or you can have homozygous short. Well, that's what it was looking for in the problem. What percentage will be short? One out of four, you can say, because it's one box, or 25% will be short. Now, the next problem is a heterozygous round seeded plant, uppercase R, lowercase r, is crossed with a homozygous round seeded plant. Homozygous because it's got two uppercases in the R's. So what percentage of the offspring will be like this parent? Uppercase R, uppercase R. So let's set up the cross, which is the first parent was heterozygous, and he's mating or having a child with a homozygous round plant. Remember, the, what you see round is the phenotype. The genotype is what I just did to develop my Punnett square. Okay, so let's set this up. Uppercase R, lowercase r, and then on this side, two uppercase R's. Now I'm going to do down for the top letters. So uppercase R, uppercase R, lowercase R, lowercase R. I move these down. And then I'm going to move these this way. So, uppercase R, uppercase R, uppercase R, uppercase R. So I have two possibilities. Homozygous dominant, purebred, true breeding, or heterozygous. Gee, they're both like the parents in this case, which isn't that common. What percentage of the offspring will be homozygous looking at the dominant? Half, 50%. Again, you could do 50% or you could say one to one or two to two. If you like counting the squares, you could say two squares were homozygous dominant and two were heterozygous. Okay. Remember, genotype is the letter. Phenotype is what you see, the photo. And we are doing Punnett squares, which are looking at what are the potential offspring or child? What will my child have? Will they be tall? Will they be short? Will they be round? Or will they be wrinkled? Uh, so we looked at some very simple uh, crosses, but you don't need to know the hugely complex. But I hope that this little tutorial will help you complete the homework that I want you to complete and bring into lab so that we have a starting place in lab because this lab is very difficult if you haven't prepared. And if you've heard me say this, congratulations. I thank you for following through. If you need to listen again, do it. If you need to slow me down, do it. Or if you just need to listen, listen. Write it down as I'm talking. Write the examples down. And do it yourself. This will be in the classroom for the entire unit that you need this. Okay. Bye.